Christos Anasti, Christ is risen. Good evening. To carry on our lecture of St. Paisios with pain and love, and our Lord will never abandon us. Today, people are in such a state that they do whatever they can that comes to their mind. Unfortunately, some are addicted to medications, others to other forms of drugs, alcohol, whatever it might be. And every so often, a few people will get together and believe it or not, start a new religion. Considering how things are, one would expect more crime, more accidents, society to be even more upside down than it is as we know it. But God always comes to our assistance. Once a man visited St. Paisios in his little Caliba, Calidi, and he asked him if he had a guitar. And this young man who came to St. Paisios was high on hashish and he wouldn't stop talking. And St. Paisios said he did not even bother to ask if he felt like listening to him. And on top of that, he wanted a guitar. And St. Paisius went on to say, others are sick and tired of their lives so much that they consider suicide. Are caused with so much trouble that in order to draw attention to themselves, they contemplate suicide. And these are blasphemous thoughts that should not cross their minds, but they should go away. And these people are actually tired of their lives and they don't even know what to do. St. Paisio tells us that one of them said to him, I want the newspapers to write that I'm a hero. Others will use people like him to do their business. Thank God our world is not in worse shape, he says. The good thing is that God does not abandon us. Our good God is guarding the world with both hands. In the past, he used only one hand. Today, in the world in which we live in, you turn on the news, no matter which channel you turn on, there's nothing positive in the news. It's nothing but negative. And the world in which we live in is full of danger. And thank God our Lord is watching over us like a mother watches over her child. A mother who watches her child with every step when it starts to walk. Today, more than ever, before Christ, the Panagia, all the saints are side by side, helping us, walking with us. But the unfortunate thing is we don't realize it. What would become of our world without their help? So many people are in need of help in today's world in which we live in. Instead of turning to God, the church, they turn to other things for medicinal help, they say. They turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, they turn to things that 
one can even understand. People are desperate. Other people are confused. Others are unable to sleep because they have pain. And these are the very same people who drive cars and motorcycles and have dangerous jobs handling, handling dangerous equipment. Are these people capable of driving in their condition? The world should be full of accidents. God is keeping watch over us, but we don't seem to notice this. St. Paisios writes in his books, I remember in the old days when our parents went to work in the fields, they left us with their neighbors who would watch over us together with their own children. But back then children were well behaved. The neighbor would only take a peek at us occasionally. She did her chores and we played quietly. Their neighbor was like Christ, like the Panagia and the saints in the old days. With one peak, they kept, they kept watch over our world. Today, they must intervene all the time. As people are losing their balance and falling left and right, they are there to catch them. Things are really bad, he writes. May God help us. It's like a mother whose children have all kinds of problems. One child suffers with an illness. Another child may be high strung, and yet the mother may be overwhelmed and can't handle this. Then on top of that, she may have to care for her neighbor's children also, so that they don't climb up some tree and fall down, or find a knife and cut themselves, or hurt one another. And she must be constantly on the watch, vigilant and attentive, while they have no sense of her anguish and worry. It's the same with the world in which we live in. People don't understand that it is God who is helping us with all the dangerous devices available to us. We would have been destroyed many times were it not for his help. But you see, we have God, our Father. We have Christ, his Son. We have Panagia, the Mother, for our Mother. And we have the saints, along with all the angels, our Archangel, our brothers and our sisters, to gather to help protect each and every one of us. If only we knew how much the devil hates God's creation, how much he hates mankind and wants to annihilate each and every one of us, how easily we forget who our enemy is. Our enemy is not our neighbor, our brother. Our enemy is the evil one. St. Paisio tells us, do you know how many times the devil has wrapped his tail around the world and tried to destroy it? But God has not allowed it. He ruins 
the devil's plan. When the devil tries to cause harm, God takes the evil and he turns it into good. The devil may be plowing the field now, but in the end, Christ is the one who will sow the seed. The good God never allows for more than three generations to elapse during times of tribulation. This way, there's always some yeast left over. Before the Babylonian captivity, the Israelites, through their last fire and sacrifice, into a dry wall. Later, when they could once again offer sacrifice, it would be there for them. It took them 70 years to return. But when they did, they found the fire and started sacrificing again. In all trying times, we have people who are not swept over. God always saves some yeast for the next generation. The communists worked for 75 years. That is how long they stayed in power, St. Paisios wrote. And once again, he writes, three generations passed. The Zionists have been working for such a long time, but their power will also wane away. God has permitted and does permit us to be shaken by adversity. Difficult times are always before us. There's always a bump in the road. Nothing in life ever comes easy. We will always be greatly tested. We have to take this warning seriously, and most of, all, most of all, we have to learn to live spiritually. We have to take these things into consideration. Circumstances are forcing us and will force us to labor spiritually. It's better that we do so now with joy and on our own initiative rather than later by necessity when all kinds of sorrows will have come upon us. Many saints would have loved to have lived in our times and have had our chances to struggle for Christ. I'm happy when certain people threatened to get rid of me, when I say things that spoil their plans, St. Paisio says, Some, sometimes late at night, I hear from inside my little Kalib the sound of people jumping over my fence, and my heart pounds sweetly. But instead, I hear someone shouting, a telegram has come requesting that you pray for one who is taken ill. And I say to myself, is that all? There goes my chance, he says. Not that I'm tired of living, but the idea gives me joy. We should be happy, all of us that this opportunity is given to us every day, the opportunity to pray for our brothers and sisters, for those who are in need.
that we, as St. Paisio says, should take advantage of this. When someone sends us a note, please pray for me. Someone tells us, remember me in your prayers when you go to church. Light a candle for me. Say a prayer for me. And so forth. In the past, when a war broke out, people became vigilant and took up arms to fight the enemy and defend the homeland defend their country. Today, it's not our homeland that we are called to protect. Even though the world is in turmoil, even though the youth marches, our elderly are ill, our families are being divided. We are at war spiritually. Our homes are not burning down with fire from the outside, but they're burning down spiritually from the inside. We are at struggle with our brothers and sisters. We're dishonoring each other. We're called to help one another, not to destroy one another. We're called to, to help with the struggle, to help our brothers and sisters up in their time of need. These days, we are called to the arms, either to our Lord Jesus Christ, or to help someone who is suffering. These days in which we live in, it's not our families that we are called to fight for, to prevent the barbarians, as St. Paisio says, from burning our houses and dishonoring our sisters. Nor are we called to struggle for a nation, for our ideologies. St. Paisio says, these days we are called to arms either for Jesus Christ or for the devil. The front is plain for all to see. He writes, during the Nazi occupation, one became a hero for not saluting a German soldier. Nowadays, you become a hero when you do not salute the devil. We will witness horrific events, he writes, and there will be spiritual battles before us. The saints will become more holy and the vile will become more vile. Yet, he writes, I feel a great consolation inside. This is only a storm. Like past storms, it will pass. Our struggle matters because it is not a struggle against an Ali Pasha or a Hitler and a Mussolini, but a struggle against the devil himself. And Saint Paisio concludes, may, concludes for this reason, our wages will be heavenly. And I conclude by saying, may our good God take evil and turn it into good. Christos Anesti. May our Lord bless you 
and keep you in his grace. Pranya Pola to all those who celebrate this day of the feast of Saints Constantine and Helen. Christos Anesti. Amen.